Hello friends and welcome to our lecture on gibberlins. In today's lecture, we will be talking about brief account of gibberlins and their structure, history of discovery of gibberlins, biosynthesis of gibberlins, effect of gibberlins on growth and development, and lastly mechanism of gibberlin action. First of all, let me give you a brief account of gibberlins and their structure. There are 126 known gibberlins divided into two classes and many more may be discovered in the future. Plants produce these hormones naturally through biosynthesis as they grow, ensuring that they have the hormones they need to develop normally. And these hormones can also be applied to plants by gardeners and farmers to achieve specific desired outcomes. Gibberlins are diterpene plant hormones that are synthesized through complex pathways and control diverse aspects of growth and development. While the most widely available compound is GA3 or gibberlic acid and the most important GA in plants is GA1 which is the GA primarily responsible for sitem elongation. Any plant has several GAs and different GAs differ in their biological activity according to the ease with which they are metabolized to GA1. They form a metabolic sequence. Some inactive GAs are metabolic products of active GAs. GAs are widespread and so far ubiquitous in flowering plants and non-flowering plants, for example, gymnosperms, plants as well as ferns. They have also been isolated from lower plants such as mosses and algae. At least two fungal species and most recently from two bacterial species. Gibberlins are diterpenoid acids derived from tetracyclic diterpenoids known as carine. The basic carbon skeleton of GA is known as gibane, but today the term gibane is in use. However, the systematic nomenclature of GA is based on carine and gibane structure. Let's now talk about the history of discovery of gibberlins. Japanese farmers first observed the phenomenon of abnormal elongation in certain rice plants early in the season. These plants often become unhealthy and strile. The Japanese gave this disease many names but most commonly called it bakany, foolish seedling. In 1898, the agent of the disease bakany was deduced by Hori as being a fungal pathogen of genus Fusarium. In 1926, Kurosawa discovered that the disease was caused by substance secreted by the fungal species named as Gibrilla physicorae. In 1935, Yabuta isolated the compound from Gibrilla physicorae and called it Gibberlin A. This compound was found to stimulate growth when applied to rice roots. In 1954, the Britishers discovered entirely a new compound from Gibrilla frugicari and named it as gibberlic acid. Dear friends, let's now talk about biosynthesis of gibberlins. Gibberlins are diterpenes synthesized from style coenzyme A via a maulonic acid pathway. They are all having either 19 or 20 carbon units grouped into either 4 or 5 ring systems. The fifth ring is a lactone ring as shown in the structure above attached to ring A. Gibberlins are believed to be synthesized in young tissues of shoot and also in the developing seeds. It is uncertain whether young root tissues also produce gibberlins. There is also some evidence that leaves may be source of some biosynthesis. The pathway by which gibberlins are formed is outlined as. 3-acetyl coenzyme A molecules are oxidized by two NADPH molecules to produce three coenzyme A molecules as a side product and maulonic acid. The maulonic acid is then phosphorylated by ATP and decarboxylated to form isopentyl pyrophosphate. Four of these molecules form gernile gernile pyrophosphate which serves as a donor for all GA carbon atoms. This compound is then converted to copyl pyrophosphate which has two ring systems 
copyl pyrophosphate is then converted to chlorine which has four ring systems subsequent oxidation reveal chlorinol chlorinal and chlorinic acid respectively chlorinic acid is converted to aldehyde form of ga12 by decarboxylation ga12 is the first true gibberellin ring system with 20 carbon atoms from the aldehyde form of ga12 arise both 20 and 19 carbon gibberellins but there are many mechanisms by which these co- other compounds arise dear friends before moving let me address you about the effects of gibberellins on growth and development active gibberellins show many physiological effects each depending on the type of gibberellin present as well as the species of the plant some of the physiological processes stimulated by gibberellin are outlined as stem elongation by stimulating cell division and cell elongation bolting or flowering in response to long days breaking seed dormancy in some plants which require stratification or light to induce germination enzyme production for example alpha aminase in germinating cereal grains for mobilization of seed reserves maleness in dioecious flowers parthenocarpic development of fruits delay of senescence in leaves and citrus fruits let me move towards the most important section of this lecture that is the mechanism of gibberellin action let me begin with stem growth how ga stimulates stem growth gibberellins are extremely active molecules in stem elongation response to ga3 can be seen at levels as low as 0.1 nanogram for lettuce or rice seedlings sensitivity to even smaller amounts of ga have been recorded the methyl ester of ga3 has been found in the fern ligodium japonicum when it induces the formation of anthridia in dark grown protonemata at a concentration as low as 10 raised to the power -14 molar for gibberellin is to be effective at such low concentrations efficient mechanism for amplifying the hormonal signal must be present in responding cells the two ga regulated phenomena that have been studied in great detail and about which the most is known are stem growth and mobilization of reserve substances in the endosperm ga stimulates stem growth by cell elongation and cell division gibberellin is increase both cell elongation and cell division in response to application of ga to dwarf peas for example internodes of tall peas have more cells than those of dwarf peas and the cells are longer mitosis increases markedly in the subapical region of the meristem of rosette long day plants after treatment with gibberellin the dramatic stimulation of internode elongation in deep water rice is due to in part to increase cell division activity in the intercalary meristem moreover only the cells of the intercalary meristem whose division is increased by ga exhibit ga stimulated cell elongation now ga stimulates stem elongation by cell wall extensibility dear friends the orientation of microfibrils determines the directionality of cell expansion but it does not influence either the rate or magnitude of expansion normally the microfibrils in the walls of cells of the stem have a transverse orientation which favor elongation growth in lettuce hypocotyles ga was found to promote cell expansion even in presence of microtubule poison called as colchicin which causes the deposition of randomly oriented cellulose microfibrils in the cell wall in this case geo stimulates radial cell expansion instead of cell elongation this finding indicates that the mechanism of ga induced cell elongation is independent of orientation of cellulose microfibrils the elongation rate can be influenced by both cell wall extensibility and osmotically deriving rate of water uptake since the ga stimulation of elongation of lettuce hypocotyles and cucumber hypocotyle is not associated with an increase in turgor pressure 
GA does not appear to act by increasing the rate of water uptake. In contrast, GA has consistently been observed to cause an increase in the mechanism of extensibility of cell walls of living cells. An analysis of P genotype differing in gibberellin content or sensitivity showed that gibberellins decrease the wall yield threshold, which is the minimum force that will cause wall extension. Thus, both gibberellin and auxin seem to exert their effects by modifying cell wall properties. Recently, a close correlation between GA stimulated growth and the activity of enzyme xyloglucan endotronus glycosylase represented as Z has been observed for many tissues. Z is an enzyme that hydrolyzes xyloglucan internally and transfers one of the ends of the free ends of an acceptor xyloglucan molecule. Z thus has the potential to cause molecular rearrangements in the cell wall matrix that could promote wall extension. Auxin induced growth is not associated with an increase in Z activity. Thus, effect is specific for gibberellins. Whether or not Z alone can increase wall extensibility or whether it acts in concert with other cell wall loosening factors remains to be determined. One possibility is that Z facilitates the penetration of expansions into the cell wall. According to this view, GA and auxin may work together to promote cell wall loosening. Auxin induces proton extrusion while GA stimulates Z activity which allows expansion protein to penetrate into the wall where they become activated by acidic pH. Consistent with this idea, deeper water rise internodes that were frozen and then thawed have shown that the increase in the mechanical extensibility of isolated cell walls from rice internodes. Thus, both expansions and Z may require for GA stimulated growth. Dear friends, the most important function of GA is the enzyme production that is alpha amylase in germinating cereal grains for mobilizing the reserved food. During germination and early seedling growth, the stored food reserves of the endosperm, chiefly starch and protein, are broken down by a variety of hydrolytic enzymes and the solubilized, su solubilized sugars. Alpha amino acids and other products are transported to growing embryo. The two enzymes responsible for storage degradation are alpha and beta amylase. Alpha amylase hydro hydrolyzes storage chains internally to produce oligosaccharides consisting of alpha 1 4 linked glucose residues. While beta amylase degrades these oligosaccharides from the ends to produce maltose, a disaccharide. Maltase then converts maltose to glucose. Alpha amylase is secreted into the starchy endosperm of cereal seeds by both secutellum and the alluron layer. The sole function of alluron layer of seeds of graminaceous monocots such as barley, wheat, rice, rye and oats appear to be synthesis and release of these hydrolytic enzymes. After completing this function, alluron cells undergo programmed cell death. Experiments carried out in early 1960s confirmed that the secretion of storage degradating enzymes by barley alluron layer depends on presence of the embryo. When the embryo was removed, that is the seed was deembryonated, no storage was degraded. However, when deembryonated seeds were excised, storage was digested, demonstrating that the embryo produce, produces a diffusible substance that triggered alpha amylase release by alluron layer. It was soon discovered that gibberellic acid could substitute for the embryo in stimulating starch degradation. When the embryonated hop seeds were incubated in buffered solution containing gibberellic acid, secretion of alpha amylase into the medium was greatly stimulated after an 8 hour lag period. The significance of gibberellin effect became clear when it was shown that the embryo synthesizes and releases gibberellins chiefly GA1 into the endosperm during germination.
Thus, the serial embryo efficiently regulates the mobilization of its own food reserves through the secretion of gibberellins, which stimulates the digestive function of aluron layer. Gibberellin has been found to promote the production of and secretion of variety of hydrolytic enzymes that are involved in solubilization of endosperm reserves. Principal among these is alpha amylase. Since the 1960s, investigators have utilized isolated aluron layers or even aluron cell protoplasts rather than half seeds. The isolated aluron layer consisting of homogeneous population of target cells provides a unique opportunity to study the molecular aspect of gibberellin action in the absence of non-responding cell types. Dear friends, before winding up, let me sum up. Gibberellins are diterpene plant hormones that are synthesized through complex pathways and control diverse aspects of growth and development. Gibberellin is a type of plant hormone which regulates growth. GAs are important for induction of germination in dormant seeds. They are also important for mobilization of reserves in cereal grains. They promote the fruit development, especially in grapes and some fruits, increasing yield in sugarcane, and maleness in dioecious flowers, delay of senescence in leaves and citrus fruits. With this, we will conclude our topic gibberellins and their mode of action. Thank you.